It started off with my English teacher. I was 14 years old. She asked if any of us had heard of FGM before. And I just kind of assumed it's an acronym for something, maybe a bank, maybe, I don't know what it was. And so I Googled FGM and female genital mutilation came up. My first instinct was disbelief. I can't believe this happens to women. Why haven't we ever spoken about this? Hi, I'm Luna, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about a music video we made last year, celebrating the powerful thing called the glitterous. Because apparently, it threatens the societies. <laughs> it's this disastrous thing that is going to ruin civilization. So why not celebrate it? I went back the next day really, really angry towards society in general. And that's when we decided to do a radio project to raise more awareness, to talk about the ins and outs of FGM. I think the shaming of female genitalia starts from a very early age. And so what happens with kids is if they ever come across anything that makes them uncomfortable, it's not discussed. But then when we were doing that radio project, our head teacher gets a phone call. 70 angry Somali men are going to protest outside the school because of the work you're doing. And instead of our head teacher saying, I'm proud of the work that they're doing, he was getting really nervous. And it just made me even more angry. And I was like, Amuna gets angry. <laughs> like, I will do it and I will make it even better than I thought it'd be. <laughs> it's not mean, it's not rude. It's just celebrating the vaginas, you know? <laughs> the school had four <laughs> senior leaders who are all women. And they walked into his office and they said, you know, if you stop this work, we're all going to resign. Because we always heard about feminism, but it was like radical feminism. It was like, we hate men, we don't like them. But then I thought, actually, if that's what feminism is, like, that's kind of cool. They just went into the office to their boss and told him to basically shove it. Does that make you like worry about putting yourself out there or like? It used to, because some of them would threaten like physical violence. Um, but. Now it's kind of, I will put myself out there. Um, I will be in that space, whether you like it or not. I love that. One of my best friends, she went through so much sexual harassment when we were in secondary school. She hated walking down the halls by herself. And I remember this one time, this guy was harassing her. And I, I saw what he was doing and I marched towards him. And I'm like, you know what you're doing, you know it's wrong. Until this day, me and her are really close, and she always says, I remember when we were kids, you said something. That kind of taught me to say something. If we keep constant and keep internalising it, then the next generation of girls will learn to do the same. But if we say no enough is enough now, then when they are in year seven and they come across their first ever sexual harassment, they'll say something. Integrate UK is about empowering young people to create changes in their own society. Now you have 11, 12 year olds openly talking about FGM and honor-based violence and forced marriage and how they would help a friend if they ever thought they were in that kind of situation. The most important thing about it is it is led by young girls and women. They decide what they do, how they do it, when they do it. And ideas like the Michael Joyce music video comes out of that. So much change has happened in the last 10 years because when I was 14, no one was really talking about FGM and now our 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 year olds have made a music video. That is being shown at TEDx. It's really special and really important to us because their voices are heard now everywhere and I think that's a rare thing to see. I've had too much coffee. <laughs>
Kasi wala nang sisilaw. I love my vagina. <laughs>